This passage from Nanda Nilikani's Imagining India Ideas for a New Century captures the current crisis in our classrooms. Of an estimated 140 million children in the age group of 6 to 14 in primary schools, 50% cannot read simple words or solve simple arithmetic problems in the 5th grade. Only 58% can read a simple story and 42% can do a division problem. Shameful statistics for a country that aspires to be an intellectual capital. Which brings me back to my original question, what is the point of the education system in India? Again, like I said, I don't know the answer. What's up everybody, welcome to 6.5 CGPA, my name is Abhijit. India loves exporting engineers. We have been exporting engineers since 1970. And we love to brag about them, we love to praise them. There's nothing wrong in it, but as a matter of fact, as where reality stands, do we really know where India stands with comparison to other countries, with comparison to world? So in this episode, we will be looking forward to India's comparison with one of its greatest importer of talent, the United States. Intro! India boasts a population of 1.3 billion as compared to United States 323 million. 27.34% of that population is under the age of 14, which is more than the population of entire United States of America. Still, India has a dismal literacy rate of 72.1% as compared to United States literacy rate of 86% and the world literacy rate of 86.7%. As of primary education is concerned, 98.7% students are enrolled in primary school. But majority of them don't even complete it. On an average, according to a study, an average Indian spends 5 years in school as compared to an average American spending 12 years in school. And if that is the condition of primary schools, higher education is even scarier. 4.15% Indians hold a bachelor's degree or higher as compared to about 32% of Americans holding a bachelor's degree or higher. And out of those 4.15%, approximately 50% or so are not even worth employable as per a study. On an even higher scale of hierarchy of education, 0.6% of Indians hold a postgraduate degree as compared to 11% of Americans holding a postgraduate degree. In terms of doctoral degrees, 0.04% Indians hold a PhD level degree as compared to 1.7% of Americans holding a PhD degree. But that doesn't count 1 million plus Indians already residing in US. And boy, they are educated. According to 2016's report, 1,86,267 Indians went out to US for higher studies, 70% of which were enrolled in STEM subjects. And this number is basically increasing every year. So you might be thinking that since we are so much into STEM subjects, we are so much into engineering and research, we must be contributing phenomenally to this world. But no, my friends, I want to say sorry to disappoint you that India produces less than 10% of the academic research papers that are published as compared to US. However, the information revolution has a weakness, and the weakness is precisely the educational system. The United States has the worst educational system known to science. Our graduates compete regularly at the level of third world countries. <laughs> so how come the scientific establishment of the United States doesn't collapse? If we're producing uh, a generation of dummies, if the stupid index of America keeps rising every year, just watch network television and reality shows, right? How come the scientific establishment of the United States doesn't collapse? Let me tell you something. Some of you may not know this. America has a secret weapon. That secret weapon is the H-1B. Without the H-1B, the scientific establishment of this country would collapse. Forget about Google. Forget about Silicon Valley. There would be no Silicon Valley without, without the H-1B. And you know what the H-1B is? It's the genius visa, 
okay? You realize that in the United States, 50% of all PhD candidates are foreign born. At my system, one of the biggest in the United States, 100% of the PhD candidates are foreign born. The United States is a magnet sucking up all the brains of the world, but now the brains are going back. Right. They're going back to China. They're going back to India. And people are saying, oh my God, there's a Silicon Valley in India now. Oh my God, there's a Silicon Valley in China. Duh. Where did it come from? It came from the United States. So don't tell me that science isn't the engine of prosperity. You remove the H-1B visa and you collapse the economy. In Wall Street Journal, editorialized against a congressman who wanted to ban the H-1B, saying they'll take jobs away from the American people. The Wall Street Journal said, look, there are no Americans who can take these jobs. These are at the highest level of high technology. They don't take away jobs from Americans. They create entire industries. So what's the point? The point is that even though we are producing global leaders, we are producing CEOs of tech giants, one out of eight startup on an average in Silicon Valley is initiated by an Indian. We are becoming an IT hub, IT capital for the world. It is far from reality where majority of Indians are. Majority of Indians do not even have access to decent high school education. Majority of Indians who are highly educated, they are basically living inside a bubble which is separating them from the entire community which they are part of, the country which they are part of. This video is intended to the people who are living inside that bubble. That as a responsible citizen, you need to understand where your country is heading towards. And not just get blinded by media showcasing achievements of a few IITNs or a few Olympians or a few spelling bee champions. India has a lot of potential to offer to the world and only if we have the right knowledge that how much work we have to do, we will be able to proceed towards it. So before even India dares to call itself a global superpower, we collectively have a lot of homework to do. Literally. So thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a big fat thumbs up, share it with your friends and family. Subscribe to 6.5 CGPA for more enlightening videos. And till that time, see you next week.